All right, guys, I figured uh, this project was getting far enough along now that I probably needed to start documenting it for you. I know many questions will come once it's done, and I'll have this to point back to. Uh, what I did here with my uh, rock-infested hell hole is chiseled down into the ground. Oh, about I got about eight inches of drop on that tank, which is a two-foot tank. That's a big drop to lower the, the level of the system. And you can see I've already got the little built-in bulkhead uh, covered up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually install a two-inch bulkhead that's going to be here tomorrow, right here in this nice big flat spot. And that's going to lower the level of my return line. Now, I'm not even so much worried about the level of the return itself, but keeping everything inside the box that I'm building all nice and aesthetically pleasing, and then lowering the overall return by not having a pipe have to come up and over the top of the tank. That alone you know, gives us another three or four inches, which is huge. That's really a big deal. Uh, the way this system's going to run... We're not exactly sure how big we're going to make the grow part of it yet, but it's going to have three ebb and flow beds on the back side. Uh, those are going to be supported with uh, 10 foot long 4x4s running this way with some 2x4 inner connections. And we'll have the tanks running um, basically like end tank running this way, middle tank that way, and end tank that way, like an H configuration. So that when you walk back behind here, and you want to work that center tank you can actually reach the entire ebb and flow bed they're going to be built out of again those 50 gallon tanks i'll have that up soon and be able to show you what that looks like but again there'll be one this way one this way one that way across the back and then my original plan i was going to do two wicking beds right here on these corners and use these corners to support them but with how nice this return level is working out I may just, uh, and they're going to be built out of these fiberglass tubs. I have 10 of these. I'm going to use two of them in this project at least. And I'm thinking about just setting them like right here. Like one on each side, equal distance from the box that we've built there out of the landscaping timbers. So that, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing and boxing them in. They only need to come up about, oh, about a foot off the ground. I mean, it could be done real easy with some center blocks, some sacrete, and some, some stumps off of the crappy landscape timbers look at these i haven't decided if i'm going to take them back to lowe's or not yet i ordered some landscape timbers delivered and i mean some of this stuff is just you know it's not usable but if i need them just for you know basically stumps in the ground that it would it, they're, they're plenty good for that so that's what i'm thinking about just basically using them for and just lifting these up a little bit because that would put i mean you see these coming to about my knee right now they could put them right at waist level and they'd be really look nice, four foot by four foot beds, elevated. Returning that two inch, I got a little hole cut out down there for the return line. And so all I'm doing now is putting these together. And I'm going to show you what I'm using to put these landscape timbers together. Since they're only holding dirt instead of like uh, water pressure like the Miyagi, it's really not a lot of pressure. And I'm just using these guys here. Um, these these have been working out really good for me. They say they're designed to countersink. They don't countersink that great though, but all I'm doing is take a larger drill bit and drill a little bit into the top hole. But I'm doing a pilot hole for these things so it has a place to countersink into. They're working really, really good. Um, first couple courses I've been doing four per beam. And uh, once I get up a little further, I'll go down to three per beam. You can see they're right here and you can see how I've countersunk them really really easy a lot easier than pounding spikes and they cost less so uh we'll get on it and i'll catch up with you uh one thing i am doing if you notice these are eight foot landscape timbers i'm cutting them to seven feet eight foot around that tank just seemed like overkill uh with the gaps in it so uh we're taking a foot off them that'll reduce my amount of fill i'm just going to use cheap top soil it's 15 dollars a yard probably yard and a half it'll take to fill that in that's going to give us a great deal of insulation should be a cool little project and uh I don't know, we've been talking about doing a really big one. I might not. When I'm looking at the cost here, it might be time to, to do what I've always said, which is the most efficient thing is to take one small system and expand it infinitely. Well, we can do that here. We can, uh, with wicking beds, we could run 10 beds like that off this one tank. And uh, then all that energy return crap, we can just kind of shit can that, can't we? Anyway, we'll catch up with you with another video in a bit.